What is prayer? In many ways, prayer is a simple thing to do. But sometimes we can have a limited view of what prayer actually is. Now, don't get me wrong. Prayer is a means of supplication and making requests to God. It's just that prayer is also more than that. Prayer is both talking to God and having a relationship with Him. Prayer is making yourself available to God and allowing Him to make Himself available to you. Prayer is a way to ask God for provision for tomorrow and a means by which He provides the sustenance we need for today. So we pray not to get our own way, but rather we pray to align ourselves to God's will. We pray not for things that might create independence from God, but rather we pray as an expression of dependence upon God. Yes, God loves to hear our prayers and requests. He listens to them, He delights in them, and He responds to them. It's just that prayer is also where we can confess our sins, praise His goodness, listen to His voice, and be reminded of truth. Prayer isn't just a way to ask for more fruit, but through prayer, we begin to bear more fruit. Prayer isn't just words spoken at specific times during the day. It's living with a mindset that allows God to transform you throughout all of your days. So don't think of prayer as just an activity done before meals or bedtime, but rather think of prayer as a way of life. Good morning. There you go. That just sounds so good. So glad to see each of you today. If, if you're a guest here at Poplar Springs, we're so glad that you are here. And I want to encourage you to take a moment. And there's a Connect card in the pew rack. It looks pretty much just like this. If you'll take a moment, fill it out. After the service, I'd love to meet you, greet you. We'll, we'll have some folks back at the welcome desk and a gift that we'd love to give you. So um, we really do want to connect. That's really important for us. So here's what I need you to do. I need everybody to put on the best smile you got. Mm. Mm. Listen, I know it's been hot, and it drains us, but put on the best smile you got. I want you to move around, shake a hand, hug a neck, welcome somebody today to Popper Springs. All right, do that, do that. Let's sing together. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. 
You're all. 
moment of our lives and so Lord it's fitting now that we give to you who's given so much to us so that you could do with us and this offering all that you would we love you thank you for loving us in Jesus name amen
Amen and amen. If you have a copy of God's Word, I'm going to invite you this morning to look with me in Psalm 120. Psalm 120, and I'm going to spend just, just a few minutes in this psalm, verse 1, and then I want us to do something together today. I want us to pray. And we're going to have four segments, and if you think of the word acts, okay, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And we're going to spend some time just praying together, and I'll give you more instructions on that in just a little bit. Psalm 120. If you have found your place, I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word. As a matter of fact, hold your Bible or device up and say this with me. This is the Bible. It's God's holy, infallible, inerrant, perfect life-giving, life-changing word. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. God bless you. You be seated. I've got three simple points. I don't know if you've ever uh, felt like you were praying on empty, but that's the title I went with today, Praying on Empty. Sometimes I feel like I live a lot of my life on the needle that says empty. You ever feel that way? Uh, I am notorious for uh, driving every drop of the gas out of the gas tank before I pull into a filling station or a gas station, whatever you want to call it now. I'm a QT buff. I don't know why I said I would not do that, but I just folded like a cheap card table, and I go to QT like everybody here, right? I, I don't know what it is. It is, I don't know why, but I'm telling you, they've cast a spell on us, right? And uh, you just got to, everybody wants to go to QT. It's QT. And so I can't tell you how many times I've said, Pat, you'll be out in the middle of nowhere. And I'd say, Suge, you better pray. She said, I am sick. I, I am not praying anymore about stuff like this. Just buy gas. <laughs> so sometimes I ride on empty, and sometimes I feel like I'm praying on empty. You ever felt that way? Psalm 120 is the very first of what we call the ascent psalms. The, these were the, the songs that the pilgrims would sing as they would begin to make their way to Jerusalem. And so they, every year they would sing these same songs as they would make their journey. And this would be the very first one that they would begin to sing. Listen again to those words. In my distress. Can I tell you today that God is a very present help in times of trouble. We all know trouble, right? Trouble knows us. Trouble knows our name, trouble knows our address, it knows our email. Trouble, trouble, trouble. We all know trouble. We all know some level of distress. One thing that all of us have in common in this service today is we are a needy people. Everybody in this room has some kind of need in your life right now. Absolutely. Every one of us in this room are needy. And sometimes our pride doesn't want us to be needy. Our pride wants us to have everything together, all the covers tucked in just right. But to be honest with you this morning, I hope that nobody will ever be embarrassed because you have a need. My hope and my prayer today is that, in fact, you would embrace the fact that you have a need. Because we have a God who can meet that need. We have a God who is very present help in any time of trouble. The psalmist said, in my distress. You see, prayer is really bringing our helplessness to Jesus. Weakness is really the channel that allows us to access the sufficiency of Christ and so today, when we begin our prayer time, here's, here's, here's one thing I hope that happens. I hope all of us will just come messy before the throne of God. 
in my distress. What is your distress? What is your need? What is that thing that maybe has hemmed you in a corner and you don't feel like that you have an option? And it may be very messy. I got good news. God can handle our messes. He is a very present help in time of trouble. He goes on to say this, in my distress, I call to the Lord. The second thing I want you to nail down today is our help is in the name of the Lord. This passage is really speaking about the Lord himself. The Lord revealed his name to his people. And Jesus has a powerful name. Yahweh is a powerful name. God has a powerful name. It is not a generic power. It is absolute power in every sense of the word. And so today I can bring all of my needs, I can bring all of my distress, I can bring all of my discouragement, I can bring all of my mess to Jesus because I know that he will fight for me. So I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. I love the book of 1 John. Someday maybe the Lord will let me preach through First and Second and Third John. But in 1 John chapter 3, the latter part of that verse, there's a sentence that is so rich and so good. He says, the reason the Son of God appeared was... Now, you could put a lot of things in that blank. The, the, the Son of God appeared because he was going to go to the cross and die for our sin. Somebody say amen. And he did. You could say that Jesus appeared because he was not only going to die, but he was going to be raised from the dead. And that would be right. Jesus came in order to establish his kingdom. And that the will of the Father would be done. And all those things would be, I mean, we would say amen to all those things. But listen to this passage. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Now, that helps me today, friend. When you and I cry out in our distress and we call on the powerful name of Jesus because either the world, the flesh, or the devil has assaulted us, here's a truth that you need to know today. Everything that is over our head is still under the feet of Jesus. Nothing can oppose him. There's an old hymn called Have Faith in God. Listen to this fourth verse. Have faith in God, though all else fail about you. Have faith in God. He provides for his own. He cannot fail, though all kingdoms shall prevail. He rules, he reigns upon his throne. So I know today that in my distress, I can call on the name of the Lord because Jesus is going to fight for me. He cannot fail. He must prevail. So take your mess to Jesus. The greatest mess you and I ever had was our sin problem, right? That we were, we were separated from God. We were lost as a ball in high weeds and on our way to hell. And somewhere along the way, you heard the gospel and the truth of the gospel pricked your heart. And in repentance, you turned to God and you cried out to God, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And you asked God to save you. You believed in your heart. You confess with your mouth, and God, according to his word, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if God can take care of your biggest issue, which was your sin, he can take care of every other mess in our life. Oh, he's a powerful God. He's a powerful Lord. There is nothing too big for God. Nothing is impossible with him. That second psalm of ascent starts out by saying, I lift up my eyes to the hills, and where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. God is a very present help in time of trouble. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And then lastly, We can be confident in approaching God 
that he will hear and answer our prayer. For the life of the believer, prayer is not optional. Prayer is essential. And a confident position in prayer is placing everything in God's hands, holding absolutely nothing back. You're saying, God, I come before you. I come before the throne of grace. Even though we can come humbly, we can come confidently before the throne of grace, God, that you will hear and answer prayer. And so, Lord, I'm not going to keep anything back for myself. I'm going to place it all in your hands. Now, I can do that today, and I can do that confidently. Why? Because God wants me to come to him. He wants me to come to him. He wants me to bring all my mess to him. He is my all in all. And so today I choose to believe in the name of the Son of God. And I, I, I want to do three things for myself as, we, as I pray and we all pray together. I want to pray the word this morning because I do think the book of James makes it clear when we pray, we should pray in the will of God. And, and, and one sure way to know that you're praying in the will of God is to pray the word of God. The second thing is I know that he is going to hear me today and I know that he can hear you because we have the faith to believe the word of God. He's, I, I think the key to answer prayer is faith. Not desire, not a wish, not my will, but God, by faith, I believe that you are who you say you are and you will do what you say you will do. And so as I call upon your name, as I pray your word back to you, God, by faith, I am trusting you. And the third thing is, God, I'm going to believe what you say. Too many of us are believing what our circumstances say. Too many of you are believing what the world says. Too many of you are, are believing what the flesh says. You, you're believing what the devil says. He comes up to you and tells you all these kind of things that you know, you know, it's just not true. And yet so often we believe our chief enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil, more than we believe what God says in his word. Let's don't do that today. Let's say, God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm going to believe. I'm going to trust. I'm going to bring all my mess before you. But here's how we're going to do this. We're going to pray, you know, the Acts thing. So we're going to start with adoration. And we're just going to thank God for who he is. We're going, to, we're going to spend some time in confession, and we're going to confess sin. Yes, I said we're going to confess sin. And here's the key today. Baptists are really good at this. Baptists are confessing sin. The problem is they're always confessing somebody else's sin. But today I want you to spend time confessing your own sin. One of my favorite people to read is Bertha Smith. I don't know if you've ever read anything by Bertha Smith, but on one occasion Bertha Smith was leading a prayer conference, and so a young pastor just kind of, you know, he came down. She asked all the pastors to come down. They came down to the altar. And so she just noticed this one guy. So she walks over there to him, and he just looked up her and said, I just can't think of anything to confess. To which she said, dear sir, if you will only ask the Holy Spirit what you need to confess, you'll have plenty of things to confess that may be how you feel today I don't know anything that I need to confess just ask the Holy Spirit because he will give you a laundry list and then we're going to spend time in thanksgiving and then we're going to end our time in supplication and so here's listen you can sit where you are if you want to come and kneel you can come kneel I, I'm just telling you if you if you feel in your heart you just want to even come and lay prostrate on the carpet here then do it we're not going to pray in groups this morning this is about you getting 
in the presence of God. And we're going to pray. And I've asked, I've asked our staff to help out. So after five or six, seven minutes, I'll, I'll just kind of feel, kind of feel our way through this. And so uh, I've asked Joey to, to, to pray for us when it comes to adoration. I've asked Chris to pray for us when it comes to confession. I've asked Scott to pray for us in the area of thanksgiving. I'm going to pray for us in the area of supplication. And um, matter of fact, let me do this. So, guys, when you come, if you, if you, I know, are you still, you're still mic'd up, aren't you? Okay. But if you don't, if you aren't, then you can use this right here. So let's, let's go to the Lord. And again, you can sit where you're sitting. You can feel free to come to the altar. You, you can do whatever you want to do. Now, you're going to see in the rest of the slide, so just like this one, as we start with adoration. Say, so Kim, what is adoration? Adoration is just telling God how amazing he is. And you're going to see a scripture verse with each of these things. I want you to take your Bible, take your phone, whatever you got that's got the scripture, and I want you to look up that verse. So for adoration, it's Psalm 66, 3. And I want you to use Psalm 66, 3 to shape your prayer as you send your prayer to God. And just tell him how amazing he is. And let's start praying.
Father, how awesome you are. It is an honor to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. You're worthy of worship. You're worthy of praise. You're the creator. You spoke this world into existence. Lord, the only reason we're here today is because of you. You're the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I thank you, Father, for who you are. I'm thankful that I can call you Father, knowing that I can come to you because I'm one of your kids. You loved us so much that you gave your son, your only begotten son, So, Father, you're full of love. You're full of forgiveness. And you're our salvation. You're our hope. I look forward, Lord, to seeing what you have in store. Because, Lord, you know the past, but you also know the future. And I thank you, Father, That we can walk by faith and not by sight. Understanding that we can trust in you. You're the God who provides. I thank you, Father, for the provisions that you've given us just today. You've given us food to eat. You've given us love to experience. You've given us homes. You've given us all the physical things that we need. But you've gone way before beyond that and you've given us you and I thank you for that I thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us you're ever before us you're all powerful you're all knowing you're all loving and father we just say we love you today thank you father thank you for being our good shepherd Continue to lead us, Father, through your spirit. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we just spend some time in confession now, just ask the Holy Spirit to show you any sin wherever we need God's forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9 is a great passage. So turn and find that passage and use that passage to help shape your prayer and ask the Lord to to forgive us and to cleanse us where we have fallen short. Let's pray.
Oh, Heavenly Father, you are holy, holy, holy. God, let our hearts weep that we have offended you, that each and every one of us, we have sinned against you. We have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. Oh God, when we feel the, the pride raging in our hearts, fighting against the accusations, we can turn to your word and see that there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. All have turned aside together. They have become useless. There is no one who does good. There is not even one. Apart from you and your glorious grace and mercy, all of our so-called good deeds would be filthy rags in your presence. They will not earn us righteousness. The only way that we can stand in your presence and dwell with you in unapproachable light is because of the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross where he shed his blemishless blood that covers us so that you no longer see the filthiness of our sin and our shame, but you see the glory, the righteousness of Jesus that we are clothed in. Heavenly Father, we have not loved you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We know that in verse 8 of 1 John, it says that if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we will confess our sins, oh, Heavenly Father, let our hearts weep and break over the sin that we've committed against you, not only being a lost person, but when we've been saved, when we've been transformed into new creations in Christ, that we have trampled underfoot the Lord that we profess that we love. But, oh God, if we confess our sins, we know that you are faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us not from some unrighteousness, but from all unrighteousness. So Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you today knowing that we are in desperate need of your grace and of your mercy. But O oh, Heavenly Father, praise be Jesus Christ, we know that you hear our prayers. I want to encourage you to turn your attention to the thanksgiving. Just tell God what you're thankful for today. Use Psalm 63.3 as a guide to help you shape your prayer. Just thank Him. Thank him.
Father. I am to enter into your presence with thanksgiving. I'm reminded of it every morning because your mercies are new every morning. Your word teaches us that. Lord, I'm so thankful that your love is better than life. Better than life. And life is good because you've given it. But Lord, your love is so much more because you would see someone like me as filthy as I was and love me. And you still look at someone as dirty as I am and still love me. Lord, I pray that our lives, my life, will be an instrument of thanksgiving so that all will see what you've done, what you've done for me. Your word also says that I give thanks to you with all of my heart. I sing your praises before all other gods. Lord, there is no other God. There is only you. You are the first and the last. You alone are able to make it all happen and hold it all together and provide a place and a space for us and sustain us. And I thank you that you do sustain us. Lord, I want to thank you for your righteousness. Your word also teaches us that. Also in your Psalms. We thank you for your righteousness. And it is our instruction. It is our banner to live under. Lord, we have no righteousness apart from Christ. And we thank you that we can find it in him. And Lord, I would also just thank you for those things that we do see, like family, our individual families. Lord, I thank you for my family. And I thank you for the family that you have allowed us to be here at Poplar Springs. And I pray in days to come that you would help us to live as a Christ family as we've never before. Lord, I thank you for allowing us this place that we can gather together to sing your praises, to feel your presence, and to learn and to hear from you. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for every question that has the answer. Lord, just thank you for the sweet time that we enjoy here this morning. In Jesus' name. So our last last little area of prayer today is supplication. And supplication is a request, right? We're asking God to do something on our behalf. And we're going to ask God to do something on the behalf of others. Philippians 4, 6 is a great verse. And I would encourage you to use that one. And... Allow the word to just uh, to help shape your prayer today. Let's pray.
Father, all over this room, I trust that there are many who are making supplication to you. That God, we would bring a request to you. We thank you that your word tells us that we don't have to be anxious. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, God, we can make requests to you. And so, Lord, we do. Lord, the, the psalmist would pray prayers of supplication for mercy. And God, we pray that you would give us mercy. God, there are many in this room today who need your mercy. That God, you would be gracious. That you would give relief. Lord, in whatever distress it may be. That God, you would give relief and that you would give mercy. Lord, the psalmist prayed that, that you would lead us, O oh Lord, in righteousness. That God, that your way would be made straight before us. Lord, I pray that not only for myself, but Lord, I pray that for our entire church family. That, Lord, you would hear our request today that we're asking you, Lord, to lead us and to lead us in righteousness and to, and to make that path so straight and clear before us, Lord. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that, God, you would just, um, Lord, give us deliverance today. God, there are so many who are bound by so many things. And Lord, your, your word says to turn, O Lord, deliver my life. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love. And so, Lord, I pray that you would deliver today. And Lord, whatever that looks like, and it could, it could be a bad relationship, it could be addiction. Uh, Lord, there are so many things that we need to be delivered from. And God, it could be sin. Lord, it could be our past. Lord, it could be just hundreds of things. But Lord, we ask today, we make a request to you that God, you would lead us in mercy, that you would lead us in your righteousness, that you, God, would give us deliverance over any sin and any bondage, God, that we may be dealing with. In my distress, I call to the Lord, and he answered me. And so, Lord, by faith today, we believe that you are going to hear our prayers and that you are going to answer our prayers. And, Lord, I pray that even now that the spiritual temperature of our church family would even increase because, God, we've just spent some time, God, in prayer on our face before you today. And so, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us, Lord, to learn from your word, the scriptures. Lord, may the Holy Spirit give us wisdom and understanding. God, would you give us a spirit today that is so willing to do whatever you ask us to do. That there would be nothing that you would request of us that we would not be willing to say yes to. And so, God, we pray that your will would be done. God, would you work in such a way that truly you would become our audience of one. And everything we do in word or deed would be done for the glory and the fame of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that together today in Jesus' name. Amen. 
God, I want you to come and just, just lead us. I want you to stand, and we're just going to sing a song to the Lord, and we're going to use this to sing praise, but we're also going to use it maybe as an invitation. Maybe somebody needs to be saved today. Maybe somebody needs to join this church today. Maybe, maybe you still got some things that are going on, and you just need a moment just to come and to pray and to keep seeking God, and let's just do that right now. And then after this song, we're going to be seated, and Brother Bud Babb's going to come and lead us in, in um, something that we need to take care of today. Scott, lead us, my friend. Sing to the Lord. Last song, Ryan. Change my Change my heart. That's right there. <laughs> Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Change my heart, O oh God. In about three and a half weeks, we'll be in a brand new uh, church year. And we're in the process right now of all these things we're having, not having, but we're doing, that we do have to have. Uh, and today we're voting for uh, the vote of two out of four names uh, for the nominating committee, which is, uh, maybe I should take that down. Maybe uh, th that's uh, very important. They've, they've taken, fill all the positions and it's quite a number of, of those. You want to give out the ballots? Have you already given them out? Come on down, guys. If you're a member of the church, 16 years of age, you're eligible to uh, vote on these. And we'll give you a few minutes to take care of it, and then we'll pick them up.
Don, do you want them to drop it when they go out, or are they going to come take them up? Pick them up. While they're uh, picking those up, uh, if you have a bulletin, you can see there, uh, next we'll be voting to elect four deacons. There are eight names on there to pick four from next week. Uh, all very eligible and you can't make a mistake with any of these individuals. All minds cleared. That's very moving, cleansing <laughs> sermon today. Some we need. That was sent straight from heaven, wasn't it? Can you dismiss us? We thank you today for allowing us just to be here and for all that we've heard, all that we've experienced. And Lord, it's our prayer that as we leave this place that your spirit remain with us. And we ask it in Jesus' name, amen.